What's going on, y'all? So lit. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> So we back again for another episode review. Girl, first of all, before we get up into the episode, let me just put this out here. I apologize. <laughs> cause hold on. Okay, cause sometimes, you know, like the lips just be really ashy and, and that's just not a good look. But anyway, so, before we get into this episode, I just want to make sure that y'all know, for those who watch other things on my channel, I did put it up in my community post um, wall that I want y'all to watch Swarm, okay? Swarm on Amazon Prime Video, all right? It is six episodes, and it's probably like, the episodes, I believe, are probably between 30, 35 minutes each, okay? And once you get into it, Baby, it's a quick watch, you know what I'm saying? Because I will most likely, I'll give it probably tomorrow night, Saturday, tomorrow night, Um, that I'm going to come on here and I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to do a video about it. And I think I'm going to do episode by episode, but I'm going to put it all in one video or whatever. I got to figure it out because... <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about it right now. I'm not gonna talk about it right now. I'm gonna leave my opinions and I still gotta finish it, okay? I started on it yesterday and I said, uh-uh, let me turn this off because I'll be up all night and I had to get up early to go to work today. But anyway, let's get up into this episode of Love at the Lockup, Life at the Lockup, Season 4, whatever episode this is, no money, more problems. Girl, first of all. Let's get up into some things, okay? And let me clear some things up. Well, no, not really. I don't got nothing to clear up. Everything that I said on this particular uh, 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 situation from yesterday, uh, last week with Monique and Derek, I meant every goddamn word I said, okay? And you can agree, you can disagree, but one thing, you know, that kind of tiffed me so bad was somebody gonna try to leave a comment and say, Oh, you're being transphobic because you did this and you did No, baby, don't ever in your life sit here and type me being transphobic, homophobic, or whatever type of phobic there is because Ashley is not. As much as I come on here and ever since the beginning of life, I love after lockup when Elizabeth was first introduced to us, I said, don't leave the transphobic comments on my page. And that's with people calling her man, misgendering her, and all of that stuff, and just being real nasty and negative because I had already saw that on Twitter when it first occurred, when it first came on. So because I said what I said in the video last week, and it wasn't to your life, and now I'm transphobic because I'm calling the person out on the um, board that they was doing and comparing the contrasts about how people would feel if that was done to them and if that stuff was said to them. Baby, get the heck up out of here. Mind you, mind you, the gag is, and I've said this plenty of times as well, one of the main reasons why I go so hard for people that are trans and, and I don't like when people be disrespecting them or whatever on purpose and just being ignorant on purpose is because I have trans friends, okay? And one of my longest friends that I've known since I was younger transitioned from when we was in high school to college to now. And she is now married in a happy relationship. And I show her what I said in that video. And that was the reason why the video took so long to get up last week because I wanted to make sure it was cool and if she had an offense to it. And she did not, she did not. So at this point, I don't care. What I said is what I said. Okay, moving on from that. And if you want to call me ignorant, if you want to still be offended by something, take that issue up with yourself. Moving on from that, let's just get back onto this fight, okay? Because some people, you know, they don't understand what <laughs> it means about everybody was wrong, okay? Um, I read Elizabeth and them. Yes, because Elizabeth and the sister needed to be read. Because they were there to prepare to fight, okay? They already had it in their mind that they were going to fight Monique and her sister. Now, why would you show up with a whole ski mask on and your wig ain't on? 
Mind you, I don't really feel like the other sister was going to fight because mama was dead up. Mama was dead up, okay? Lashes, hair, and everything, you know? And, and when she got back up in that car and her hair was so messed up, I said, damn, at least your lashes still on, girl. At least your lashes still on. Baby, I said what I said. Also, people fix, uh, 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 fix themselves to actually forget that Ashley is not on anybody's side. I cannot root for anybody because everybody in this situation is effed up and is wrong and can be blamed, okay? The blame goes to all three parties involved. Derek, Derek's sisters, Monique and her sisters, okay? It goes all the way around. Nobody is innocent. Nobody was a victor in this because all of them look stupid. All of them look stupid and everybody provoked everybody. Truth be told. And I'm only saying this because, listen, Derek had the nerve when he was trying to so-called break it up. Now, instead of pulling off his sisters away from what was going on, he went after Monique's sister and was pulling on her head. And I said, I didn't catch that at first. But when they played that thing back, I said, oh, now why did you do that? Trying to act like you doing something. Derek, you was better off just standing to the side. Somebody said Monique wasn't fighting. Monique was trying to fight. You know, she was trying to do something with them little, her, her, um, I was about to say with her little stubby arms. I said, Monique, you also should have just stood over there and let your sister take care of it because... You you really didn't offer anything, all right? But let's just break this down because at the end of the day, a lot of y'all would have did the same thing that Monique did. A lot of y'all probably would have did the same thing that Elizabeth and her sister did. A lot of y'all are on both sides of the fence and probably would have did a mixture of both, okay? But I'm finna break this down for right quick. <laughs> Derek had the nerve to say, and then Monique up here doing all this stuff, and she was provoking this or whatever. Like, she did wrong. She this, whatever. You know I'm finna go. I ain't finna go back to jail for nobody. You could jeopardize me. I said, hold up. Now, sir, I need you to calm down, okay? Because, to be quite honest, and as I will continue to say, Derek, the majority of this is your fault. The majority of this is your fault. And truth be told, it starts with you, okay? And it branches off to your sisters and to Monique. And Monique branched that off to her sisters, okay? Because you came into this whole foray with Monique, right? You was telling Monique why you was up in jail. Oh, my sisters and my family wasn't doing this and they wasn't visiting me. They wasn't doing, uh, being consistent and all this stuff. Baby, you was in jail for a good nine, ten years or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. You was in jail for some years, okay? And as I look at some of these girls and your brothers, baby, they look like they probably was kids themselves when you went in or teens. So... How could they be there consistently for you? And then we already know that, unfortunately, your mother passed away because she was murdered. You know, ain't no telling where they daddy's at because I'm pretty sure most of y'all got different daddies. No shade because you obviously has a different father than the other. So it's like, why are you feeding this lady all of this stuff so that she can have already animosity because you already know how she is, okay? You peep game on Monique and how gullible she is and how naive she is and how easy it is to manipulate her with the promise and the hope of dick. That's what it was. So she took your word as gold and she said, oh, so you don't you with your family? Well, I don't with them either, okay? That's basically what it was, you know what I'm saying? And see, Monique, you was wrong on that front because even if somebody told me, you know what, I really don't get along with my family, they ain't really this, they ain't really that, I still wouldn't have, I mean, I'd probably feel a way, but I try to get to know the family in general before passing complete judgment and taking what that person says, and especially somebody in jail, okay? Niggas lie. Niggas lie. So she done moved on and she done ran with that. He comes out. She don't want them there because of the stuff that he was saying. Come to find out, I'm pretty sure it was some stuff that was going on prior to him getting out uh, 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 between her and the family, which I feel like that's probably why the sisters had so much animosity against Monique as well, right? So when we get to see them on Love After Lockup, Monique's sister popped it off, and we all agree on that because Monique's sister should have stayed in her place, 
okay? Because Monique is a scary bitch. Let's just be honest about that. Monique's scary as hell, you know? Monique just used everything as a freaking crush. She's insecure as everything, and she let everybody else fight her battles. That's exactly what was going on, and her sister knew that shit, right? So her sister go over there talking about some, I'm just trying to check your temperature. I'm just trying to check your temperature. temperature. So we don't know the stuff that was going on prior to this before them meeting up, but we know in that case that Monique's sister was the one that popped it off, okay? But then all of the mess just started happening from then and there. We go to the fat shaming. We go to uh, one being transphobic. We go through all of that shit. Everybody's wrong, okay? And I'm sitting here like, at one point, Ashley would have backed the fuck out. <laughs> I'm sorry. I ain't finna be dealing with this. Now, one time did Derek put a kibosh on it? Okay, not one time. And like people were saying in the comments, oh, Derek, he lives for the drama. He likes what's going on because this is the tension that he craves at this point. He hasn't gotten no attention since he was up in jail all those years. So now he's getting introduced to it. And now he's like flourishing in it. He is, he's relishing in it. Okay, because any other body would have been put their foot down and said, this is my, I ain't going to say my bitch. This is my woman. You're going to respect her. You ain't got to like her, but you're going to respect her, especially in my presence. This is my family. You ain't got to like them, but you're going to respect them, especially in my presence. He ain't do none of that. You allow all of this to continue to happen. Granted, these are grown people, and you can't make them do nothing. But obviously, you can see that neither one of them got sense. And I'm talking about Monique, and I'm talking about your sisters, okay? We get to this whole situation about this fight and how all this stuff has built up. And... The sisters, Derek, they came there to fight. Now, initially, Monique and her sisters, they wanted to talk. But you got one sister that just wanted to pop off just to pop off the one that we ain't never really seen. Okay? And where everything went wrong was, first of all, don't come up in my face acting like you're going to beat my ass. Don't come up in my presence when we first get together after you didn't come at me on social media in text messages and all this other stuff saying how you're going to whoop my ass and all that shit and then you back down and go get back in the car. That's where they messed up at as well. I'm that type of person where if you say you're going to do it, show and prove and do that shit. Don't give me those idle words and idle shit and not do nothing when it comes time to, you know. You knew what you came there for. And, and, and Monique knew what it was too and that's why her sisters was there. I don't care what nobody say. They probably wasn't there initially for this whole situation to go down because they didn't know that they was going to meet the sisters. But that's exactly why she brought them there um, for the little meetup. Okay, just in case something went down. And I'm pretty sure some of y'all would have brought y'all sis and y'all people too just in case something go down because you already know how the other side act and how sneaky and grimy they is okay meanwhile they get to yang 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 and this is where monique and her people messed up at bitch why you go open up the door i said now first of all monique mama why are you at the door now see the way and i hate the way we tv do editing because sometimes the way that that look like it looked like that was at the start of the whole situation, like when they was talking instead of when they was arguing, okay? And so you go to the door, they back in the car, but they still talking shit. But then if they in the car, that should have just been it. That tr honestly should have been it, okay? We can all agree to that. But no, you want to keep on talking because, you know, adrenaline's rushing, all of this stuff. You said you was going to beat my ass, so beat my ass. You know what I'm saying? That was that dumb Chicago shit coming out. And I hate to say that because that's literally what we do out here. <laughs> Nigga, we don't back down from no motherfucking fight. But I said, Monique, no, you know damn well you ain't going to finna fight this girl. Okay? You know damn well that you not. And so when Elizabeth got out that car, did whatever the fuck it is that she did, and knocked that girl over, truth be told, like I said, it was the slowest, dumbest, and weakest fight ever. They, if they was throwing punches, it really didn't land. Mostly all of this was happening, and mostly all of this was happening, right? And then... I guess something else happened because when Elizabeth got back up in the car, Elizabeth said, bitch, scratch me up. I said, well, shit. So apparently they got some little hits off of them. Okay, Monique and her sisters, because they ain't show Monique and her sisters battle scars if they get some. They gonna, she gonna say, I just can't believe that this is how stuff gonna end when we go, um, this my last day here or whatever. I said, now, girl, 
What did you expect? You should have said no. You should have said no, okay? Y'all meeting up at the park. Baby, I probably would have been more comfortable if we would have met in front of the whole thing. Well, no, I probably wouldn't because then the whole freaking party probably would have jumped our asses and then we really would have been assed out. The other sister, she done broke a couple of nails. I, it looked like one of them was bleeding or whatever. Oh, y'all got fucked up. That little sister, she got messed up, okay? But, you know, they kind of held their own. But at the end of the day, nobody really won. Because y'all all look stupid. And, Monique, you just made me so mad when I seen you slow motion trying to hit people. Elizabeth, you made me so mad. The fact that you came there dressed the way that you dressed and then you got your ass all out. Like you was the main one that you 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 was the main one that was gonna get a lick in either way, even if the conversation was gonna go good or not. And you could try to act like you didn't want that conversation to turn switch way or sideways. You've been trying and been wanting and been saying that you was gonna put hands on Monique and her sister. Let's not, okay? You, oh, she provoked, she provoked, baby. They was provoking each other for a long gas time. Run up, get done up, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Everybody in the goddamn situation was wrong. And, and, and freaking Derek, boy, talk about something. Look at my watch. My watch broke and got the diamond. I said, is it real? I don't even truly believe that that thing cost thirty thousand dollars. I feel like you're lying, but all right, all right, go get you another one then, okay? And there we go. All of this is your fault. You knew damn well this shit wasn't gonna ease out, and, and, and everybody was gonna come together and have a little kumbaya and be like, you know, you don't like me, I don't like you, but you know, for the sake of my brother, we gonna come together. Because if that's the case, they would have been did that. They would have been did that. This is all your fault. Truth be told. Moving on from that. <clears throat> This is black. Girl, what's today? Today is um St. Patrick's. It's St. Patrick's Day, right? So let me tell you this. I had no idea today was St. Patrick's Day. I just so randomly to put this shirt on until I got to work and my coworker was like, oh, so you wearing green? You wearing green? I said, yeah. She was like, happy St. Patrick's Day. I said, shit. You want to know why? Because I thought St. Patrick's Day was last week because when I went to the movies to go see Scream, Everybody and their mama was out downtown in a green and they was drunk in the streets and everything. So I thought it was St. Patrick's Day then. I did not know. I think I sub um, subconsciously put this on because I just wanted to wear it because it's so comfortable or whatever. It's a long sleeve. But anyway, and everything else is kind of falling off of me. But <laughs> yeah, like girl, I had a shirt on yesterday and that bitch was just all over the place. I said, oh, okay. Now on the one hand, this is just a mess. I didn't realize I was looking bummy like this. But then on the other hand, I was like, I'm slimming down. I'm slimming down because that's why I was big. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into Cameron and Aries, okay? So, you know, they back together. We get back from the little, you know, rendezvous on the beach or whatever. That was cute. And, um, you know, they just trying to do some furniture shopping. Truth be told, this episode really was boring, okay? I mean, it wasn't bo it was boring. It was boring because we really didn't get anything. Like, they literally could have gave us a little bit more stuff with uh, Monique and Derek. But that one scene that they gave us, that was all. And truth be told, Monique and Derek and all they mess, whether it's fake or semi-real, it's carrying the season. It's carrying the season, truth be told. But um, Cameron and Aries, they haven't really given us anything to um, go in on them yet. You know, they go shopping for some, um, you know, furniture for, I guess, that she got a new house. Oh, hold on, y'all. Let me be careful. She got a new house or whatever that they stand in. I don't know. And they trying to get the furniture and everything. Baby, they go up in that store. And she gets on the phone because her friend Priscilla, who used to be a CO. And she was watching her uh, daughter, Lena, or whatever. So she called her, went and had him come to a beach party, a beach little get-together, whatever, randomly. And I said, well, baby, we just got off the beach. I'm like, damn, so y'all up in Florida, that's all y'all do? Y'all go to the beach? I know that sounds a little bit ignorant, but, you know, that's just what we've been seeing with Aries and Cameron. I said, ain't nobody going to work today? This the weekend? <laughs> like, what's going on? I mean, hey, if I had the luxury to do that, I would. And we got a whole, we got multiple beaches out here in Chicago. Uh, the fact that people don't realize that Chicago has like over seven beaches, I think. 
It's like, like, damn, I didn't. And then we're right by the lake. Like, literally, I live right by Lake, uh, lake Michigan. So, come on, come on, come on. I think this TikTok and this girl had to explain it because people was really confused. I said, child, Google. But anyway, he was up in that store while she was on the phone. And when I tell you Cameron was me in that moment, baby, go to a furniture store, go to any of these stores, baby, I'm just going to look around and I'm going to find something that's going to distract the hell out of me. Now, when he saw that mirror and that mirror was crystal clear, I said, oops, he said, look, damn, all the point, uh, uh, the homemade porn we could do with this and everything. I said, oh, he looking at the light bulbs and everything like this. I said, uh, uh, your vision, your vision, back up, back up. And, you know, so she told him about the whole get up with uh, Priscilla. At first, he felt some type of way, you know, because she a little CO. But, hey, it is what it is. They wind up meeting her on the beach. And, of course, Priscilla, who is a little bit older or whatever, she's just trying to get to understand what is it about um, Cameron that uh, Aries want with her, want with him. And then talking to Cameron. Because she's being like a big sister to Aries. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make sure that she's okay. And according to Aries, Priscilla's like the only family that she got out there, you know, um, in Florida. So, technically, you know, that's her family, if you want to call it. Her friend family. That's what it is. Excuse me. So, they go walking on the beach. Um... Lena and Aries go play and go get some food and try to do little TikTok dances or whatever. And then Priscilla walking on the beach with uh, Cameron, asking him all the questions and everything that, of course, needed to be asked a little bit. But it did seem like he was, she was prying a little bit much. She was putting a little bit much on, but I understood because at the end of the day, you just came up into the picture. We never met you. We don't know nothing about you. So what are your intention? You know, you saying all of this stuff because Aries' main concern is where is he getting his money from? And Priscilla was like, I seen how these dudes be. They be stacking, they be stacking, they be stacking. And then when they get out, they still got some stuff, you know. And um, she also told uh, Cameron, what is it about Aries that you like? And what got you with her? Because, you know, you could say that, oh, this my one and only, this my forever, whatever. But I done seen dudes that said that and told me that about they girls. And then come to find out, they messing around with this person, that person, that person once they get out. I said, Miss Priscilla. You know Derek and Monique, because that's exactly what was going on with Derek and Monique. Baby, at this point, Cameron said, all you need to know is, I love that lady. I'm going to be there for that lady. You see this ring? It is what it is, baby. And I ain't got an answer to nobody but one woman, and that's Aries, okay? He kind of shut that down a little bit. I said, oops. He said, I don't know who the hell she thinks she is. I ain't got to tell her nothing. Miss C, I'll go back somewhere. I said, mm, not riddle me this. Do you think Priscilla was overstepping and um, doing the most by asking all those questions and saying all the stuff that she said? Or do you think she did just the right amount of what she needed to do to get to know him a little bit because she don't know him? Or do you think she needed to go a little bit more, a little bit harder on him and make him a little bit more uncomfortable? Put it down in the comments. That's basically what was going on with Aries and Cameron. Um, I'll... I was about to say I want to get more into their story, but next week they're going to be arguing. <laughs> next week they're going to be arguing. Then we get um, Michael and Justine. <sighs> Michael and Justine, baby. At this point, I ain't going to say they annoy me. They really didn't annoy me this episode. I was really shocked at the fact that Michael's 13-year-old son, Michael Jr., He's out there living with her, um, him in Pennsylvania. Um, he said him and his mom, they had a conversation and talked and agreed that he needs him in his life. And so, yeah, let him stay out there. I said, well, what about the other kids? That's cute or whatever. You know, um, I was just like, all right, all right. Somebody tried to say, let's just keep in mind that just because... You know, we don't see them talking on FaceTime on the show. Doesn't mean that they're not. Girl, we know that. We know that. But I'm saying, you putting all this camera time on these kids that ain't yours, your stepkids, no shade. And I don't mean that with no disrespect because, you know, how some of y'all get, get a little bit sensitive when people say certain stuff. Okay, and it ain't to your liking. 
But you know what I'm saying? It's like if you was at home and you like, dang, you doing all this, you going to get ice cream with them, and you know you just kicking it with them like that, and we ain't seen you in six years, and we only got a hug in the park, and that's it. You know, you will feel some type of way. Like, sometimes you'll be like, a FaceTime ain't nothing. But, you know, you just never know. Either way, the little boy is out there with him. Um, and then he went out to go get, talk to his parole, uh, uh, parole officer, whatever, to see if she, he can get, you know, a pass so that he can travel. He can move and he can go out there to Vegas. He winds up getting approved for that. So he goes out on the phone and he talks to Mocha, right? All of this is so that he could get to Vegas. He could get to Vegas and so he could go do his little thing. Baby, who is booking Montana Mills? Anybody? Anybody know? Prior to this show, did you know? No, we did not. Okay. Um, but, you know... Mocha is like, okay, I'm happy, you know, you good or whatever, you got your papers, and so we just gonna see you out there. He was like, hold up, hold up. I give Michael this. Michael is one of the few that I've seen on this whole show, throughout the shows, that be like, I ain't doing nothing without my wife, okay? Like, if I'm going to Vegas, she going to Vegas. I said, he is a smotherer. You know, sometimes I like some stuff like that. Other times I be like, baby, please, please give me a break, okay? Um, but then Mocha felt some type of way about that. But he said, okay, fine. If she gonna come, go ahead and just take that wedding ring off though when we do business. And my whole thing is this. If you're doing business, meaning you're trying to get booked into to, to be played by a promoter or whoever and, you know, book for this club and book for that and probably get a deal, what does a wedding ring have to do with that? Okay? And at the end of the day, when it comes to these days, this this time... Nobody cares if a person is married or not. Nobody cares if a woman is married in the industry at this point because they still going to probably try to F them, you know. And the same thing with guys. They still going to have women groupies. Some guy groupies too. You know, they still going to have all of that. And if he indulge in it, he going to indulge in it. Same thing with the women. So I really don't understand why you putting so much emphasis on the fact that he has a wedding ring when you are on a net. I would say somewhat national TV show because a lot of people know about Love at the Locker, okay? So, of course, they probably going to realize you and recognize you because of the show and know that you are married expecting a child. So, it's like, come on, Mocha, let's come up with something else and stop being so archaic and so dumb. We can still get money out here. There's a whole bunch of artists and there's a whole bunch of male rappers who are out here who have girlfriends who have been in committed relationships and some of them are married as well and they still flourish. So what is the point? I just, I don't know. I think he was just trying to make issues whether or not, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like he probably feels some type of way about the fact that, you know, Michael went on ahead and hung up his player card and ain't going to be out here playing games with the girls just like he, like they partner in crimes or whatever. That's what I feel like. But moving on from that, so he about to go to Vegas with Justine. He winds up calling his sister to ask if she wants to come out and um, babysit the kids for the next seven to eight days. I said, ooh, these say eight to ten days or something like that. She was like, I mean, sure, I guess I can look into it. I can come. Okay, fine. I said, damn, girl, what type of job are you working at? You could just give them a notice right then and there and say, listen, I'm going to be gone for the next eight days, okay? I said, oh, I want that because <laughs> we got to get stuff in advance, all right? So she come out there. Justine was a little worried. And even Justine was on the FaceTime with her. Because, you know, the last time that they had their little conversation, it just didn't go well. You know, I mean, they kind of made up. But, you know, things are still rocky because of the little situation that happened between the mama and Justine. But um, Justine wanted her out there. And I like the fact that as much as we can't really stand Justine because she irks us sometimes, Justine wasn't shitting on Annie, okay? She wasn't talking mess about her to her daughter, to her kids or whatever. And she was actually like... Yeah, I want her to come out here because I want y'all to see her. Like, you know, even though we had our issue, she still trusts her with her kids. So, 
I respect that. It's still, it was some level of respect that was there. You know, it's not 100% back where it was, but it can get there. You could tell. But, um, she gets out there and then her kids was looking forward to seeing her. So you see that there's a bond already created throughout these years. Girl, I just felt some type of way. And I, I'm so glad they finally put out that, that, um, wait a minute. Her name ain't Annie. Her name is Carmen. Or is her, is her name Annie or is her wife's name Carmen? I, girl, either way, her wife. Okay, Michael's sister and her wife. I'm so glad that they finally put a label on her because I was trying to figure out, was that his other sister, like biological sister that just was a stud, you know, whatever. Well, you know, and no, that's just her wife. I said, oh, girl, you LGBT up in this bitch too. Okay, Annie, you know, it is what it is. But Annie came through the door and I said, well, damn, y'all couldn't go to the airport and pick her up. She had to get an Uber. Did y'all at least pay for the Uber for her to get here? Or was it WeTV that was paying for the Uber? Who paid for it? Y'all could just think your ass ain't pregnant like that that you couldn't get up and go to the goddamn airport. Where is Michael at? That is your sister. I wish I would. I would never. Somebody come to visit me. Somebody to come visit me. I'm going to pick them up. And I don't even care if I ain't got a car. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to pick you up in the Uber. And I'm going to pay for the Uber there. And I'm going to pay for the Uber back. Okay? And then I'm going to pay for the Uber to get you back to the uh, airport. That's just how I am. I'm just that type of person. But, you know, it is what it is. Mama didn't seem like she had a problem with it. Which make me think we TV probably paid and foot the bill. So, that's the least we TV can do. Uh, since you causing all this dysfunction in these people's relationships and shit. Moving on from that, you know, um, Justine and Annie had a little conversation. And Annie was like, so, is you doing this because he wanted, um, was it your idea or was it his idea and you just going along with it? She was like, truth be told, he asked and he came up with it and said, um, let you go ahead and, you know, come in and um, babysit the kids or whatever. And I agreed. And I said, come on, I mean, we ain't, our relationship ain't where it's supposed to be, but it ain't bad. So, you know. We can work on it, and this will give us our opportunity to, you know, talk things out if we need to. I said, I can respect that. Meanwhile, Michael came through and said, let's go. I need to um, go get some coffee or whatever. And she was like, all right. Now, Justine, oh, I don't want you to go away. You're going to have... I said, girl, let that man go get some... Go ahead and have some fun with your sister. I said, all right, all right. I get it. I know she was just being a little sarcastic. So, they get in the car. Now, baby, I thought it was just supposed to be the sis and Michael going to have brother, sis time. The wife in the back seat, too. <laughs> I said, well, if Justine had to stay home, how come the wife in the back seat just chilling? You know, she chilling, man, in her business. She said, girl, I just need to go out and get some in. I need to go for a ride. All right, that's just all that it is. But um, they go to a jewelry store. He looking for an engagement ring for, um, what's her name? A wedding ring for Justine, and he was like, basically, he proposed to her when they was in jail, when he was in jail, and got married to her in jail. So he wants her to have like a real proposal engagement type of situation, and make it feel realer than what it is because of the circumstances and how the first proposal went down. And then Annie, um, uh, the sister said, "So are you sure you're doing this just because of that, and you ain't got no other reason? Because also." They were really, oh, girl, what am I doing? They were really uh in the dark about whether or not the sister knew about Justine being pregnant. That was also an issue that was brought up as well. And then Michael was like, um, no, that's just it. That's, that's the reason right there. She was like, so it's not the fact that she pregnant. And I'm sitting here like, on the one hand, why wouldn't y'all think that the sister wouldn't know that she was pregnant when you told the mama? And I feel like the mama probably already told her. But, you know, the sister coming off like the mama didn't tell her. Because she said, does mommy know? And he was like, yeah. And she told me uh, she needs to get a DNA test and all this stuff. And she was like, well, you know that's mama. That's how she always do. You know, she done, done that in the past already, most before, you know, a few times. I said a few times. Girl, yeah, a few times. I said, y'all say that like it is what it is. I said, no, we got to put our foot down. It's not acceptable, mommy, okay? But, you know, it kind of irked me a little bit for the sister to be like, but, you know, I'm just, 
don't you think this is like a little bit too fast or whatever uh, for you to just, you know, you got other kids and all of this stuff. Like her concerns was understandable. But at this point, we are at a point of we don't need to bring up. Don't you think this was too fast as if we're going to change the situation? We can go back in time and change the situation. What's done is done. They're not getting rid of it. They're going to see it through. They're happy about it. And yes, we've all discussed and said it was way too soon because now you got going to have this newborn that's going to need all the attention, a little bit more attention than what you can already get to the kids that you already have, you know? And like the sister said, she made a valid point. She don't want the other kids to feel left out or feel like they're not getting enough time, you know, with their father when they have already spent years without them. And that has been our issue this whole time with the fact of him being there, the fact of them getting pregnant when they did, and then this bitch leaving her job. Girl, I will never get over that. You left your job. For what? Until this day, we still don't know what Michael does for money. Do he got extra paper stacked up? Because, baby, ain't nobody out here yelling, Montana Mills, Montana Mills, Montana Mills in the street. Okay? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You better go to the shop and braid some hair. I don't know. But anyway, that's what's going on with Michael and Justine. Moving on from that, we get... I was about to say we get a tired Caucasian side of things. <laughs> And y'all didn't really give this week, okay? Like, well, Taylor gave a little bit. Taylor and Chance gave a little bit. I'm going to take that back. Lizzie and Blame, I really want them to get off of here. I really want them to get off of here. And you can take Shara and Sean too, okay? But you definitely can take Lindsay and Blame. Because at this point, I was looking at their scenes and their story this whole week. I mean, um, this episode. And I was like, what's the point of this? What is the point of this? And why are we dragging this out? So, y'all know about his court cases and all of, well, his charges and stuff. Blaine was facing possibly 19 years in prison, right? The lawyer said, I wasn't going to be able to do nothing with your case until you paid me $15,000 to look at it. The lawyer went on ahead. Well, Lindsay went on a little tirade and she had a little so-called meltdown because she don't know. I didn't know that you had these charges on you. I didn't know that you could possibly go to jail. I didn't know this. And then it's going to cost $15,000. And we just put all our money up in our house trying to get that fixed. And I just don't know what's going to happen. And you lied to me. Maybe I made the wrong choice because I thought this was going to settle. But then you got, I said, girl, shut up. Shut up. You are a criminal with another criminal. What did you not expect? He was selling drugs for you. Okay? So I'm just sitting here like, girl, stop it. It's theatrical. It's the drama. And I'm sitting here like, Lindsay, if you would have kept your life together, you probably would have been in college. You could have went to a, been a drama major. You probably would have been acting on somebody's sitcom, truth be told, okay? Because you're giving. You're giving all of that, okay? And it's irritating. Then Blaine gets the news that, oh, we can get it reduced down to like three years probation and don't worry about the money because I can make something happen about that 15000 he don't want to tell Lindsay yet because he wants to surprise her. And I'm like, okay, just go ahead and tell the girl. But no, we're going to drag this out to make it seem like, you know, something is going on. You know how this girl is. She's being suspicious of you. She's up here trying to save your ass. So now she's going to go collect money from people that owe her money. Girl, she said she got on the phone with one of her friends. She was like, yo, you want to go do some collections for me? I said, damn, Lindsay, you had it like that in the street. She said, girl, yeah. Listen, so-and-so, you know, I had to give her $700 to get bailed out. I had to get this person $800. And I had to get this one, one uh, $1,100. And then that one owed me $14. So you want to go back and pick that up? Okay, cool. Bring that over to the house. I said, well, damn, one thing I will say, when Lindsay want to do something and she trying to help her man out, she going to help her man out if she can. I said, oh, you had a little money this whole time that you was playing around with Scotland. <laughs> she said, no, I'm with a man that claimed that he had money, so I'm going to use his money. I said, all right, all right. But at this point, it was just stupid. And I'm just like, you see, you don't want her stressing out. You don't want her doing this. You don't want her doing that. But yeah, you won't tell her what it is because she's trying to come up with this money for you and she don't really need it. But you won't tell her that she don't need to do it because you got it taken care of because the lawyer has already talked to you and reduced everything. 
I'm just like, what is the point of this? And then you're meeting your, his daddy and everything, and the daddy just seemed a little off and everything. I said, was he on drugs at one point? Because that's how he was sounding, like he, you know, the side effects from once he used to be a heavy drug user. I'm just assuming, I'm not saying that that's what it is, but that's just how he was acting, you know? Um, you know, when you do drugs for a long time, and sometimes it just has that lingering effect of, you know, you probably overdosed a few times and it fucked you up. That's what it's saying like with his daddy, you know. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. I don't really care about Lindsay and Blaine. If anything else happened with him, I don't give a damn. Oh, yeah, she was talking to her daughter about sex. Okay. In the shoe store. Why do y'all wait till y'all get to the suit? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because you think that your parent or, or the kid ain't going to act out or the parent ain't going to act out. So we do stuff in public because I remember telling my mama that, you know, because um, I had a girl and um, it was like one of the first girlfriends or whatever that I had actually brought to her house. <laughs> Said she was my friend or whatever. And we was up in Walmart because <laughs> we was actually serious. We was actually serious. And we was up at Walmart. I was shopping with her. And I was like, so mom. You know a girl that came over to the house, you know that's my girlfriend, right? She was like, I already know. Okay, like, you don't bring nobody on. You know, so you just, I, I guess, being out of the public or whatever, it, it, it like you kind of subconsciously feel like, okay, they ain't going to act the ass if they don't agree, you know, because they don't want to, you know, show their ass in public. But then again, you got some that will. So I was just like, oh, it just felt so uncomfortable. I said, Lindsay trying to be a mama. It just didn't feel real. I don't know. I don't know. Just because we don't see her in that state. Moving on from that, Chaz and Taylor. Leave his ass, girl. Leave his ass. We don't need to be giving him any more chances. Chance, you ran out of chances, okay? Because, listen, at the end of the day, Taylor, I'm going to have to get on you for a second because, baby, you are just as dumb. Now, listen, I'm pretty sure you probably saw some of love at the lockup when you was on your season or whatever. Um, because Bobby saw some, Bobby commented on a couple of videos. Hey girl, I hope you're doing great. But, um, also because we was team Bobby over here, we was team Bobby over here. But at the same time, my mom, you know, I'm pretty sure you saw some things and I'm pretty sure you see stuff on the internet and you probably tired of people saying that you dumb, you stupid or whatever. It seemed like you kind of slightly matured a little bit, came into your senses slightly, but not really because you still with that man and you were still letting that man do some stupid shit. But here's where you have to take responsibility about some things, okay? Because y'all go to a financial officer. Y'all go to a financial advisor just to see what's going on. Chance is talking about some... He ain't never told her what's going on with the finances and hopefully she don't find out everything that's happening because, you know, he owe a lot of money, okay? He owe a lot of money. He got up in that thing, started lying about how much he got, how much he paid for this, how much he got on this, and, and, and where the bulk of the money at. So the lady was like, all right, <laughs> oh, let me stop hitting this. The lady was like, Miss Financial Advisor was like, so, you have a job? Taylor was like, no, nah, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I said, a stay-at-home mom? Damn, Taylor. I said, now, hold the f*** up. Chance, whoop job, you got this. Making y'all comfortable enough for you to stay at home. I said, no wonder why the credit scores is low. No wonder why the bills is backed up because only one income is coming into the house. And that's why she's so freaking concerned about money. Because she ain't working, he working. I said, uh, okay. Now, in this situation, I still would have kept the job. I don't give a good goddamn, okay? Chance has already proven that he cannot be trusted with anything, and you still took that job and said, no, I don't want it. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to work until this baby pop, okay? That's just what it is, you know, uh, fucking around with Chance, okay? Meanwhile, he said he works a job that he makes 35000 well, What's that? Thirty-five dollars an hour. That's like seventy-five thousand dollars a year. I was like, okay, that's pretty decent for somebody that just got out of jail. What do you do? Construction or something like that? Cause that's nice. That's nice. Okay. Mm -mm, kind of lower middle class, something like that. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Meanwhile, it was like, okay, so that's 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 fine. And he was like, I got seven credit cards. And the lady said, 
why do you have seven credit cards? She was dead confused. Like, what? She wasn't, you know, because I don't ever really hear about people that really had that many credit cards like that. And at the end of the day, it's like, why do you have all those credit cards? Because what you don't realize is the moment that you sign up for a credit card, credit cards is a loan. The initial payment on there, amount on there, that's what they're giving you. And then once you use that bitch, you got to pay that shit back plus interest. So it was just like a bank loaning you money and you got to pay it back with interest. Like, so you're really doing yourself no favor. And it's so messed up the way that this financial um, system is because you need, sometimes you need a credit card just to establish credit because you need credit to get this and to get that or whatever. So that was his excuse. He said one car, a couple of cars probably got 400, a couple of cars got 300, a couple of cars got 700. And I said, well, what the other cars got? That's six. What a seventh one at? Okay. And so Miss Financial Advisor lady is doing all the stuff like click, 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 click. Okay, so you know, you get like thirty-five, thirty-three, thirty-five thousand dollars worth of debt. Um, because he said he got like four loans or whatever, a couple of loans or something from the bank. He was like, he got a twenty-eight thousand loan, a thirty-something thousand. I said, wait a minute, what? No, a twenty-eight thousand loan and a twelve hundred thousand dollar loan. I said thirty, twenty-eight thousand dollars. $1,200. God damn, Chance. You know, that numbers like that scare me. <laughs> numbers like that scare me because I have this real, real fear. And this is why I be the way that I am. And I just don't understand people who don't have money that's so quick to spend money because I have this fear always of not having enough. Even if I get it, like, if you look at my bank account now, you can be like, okay, uh, you good, you can, you ain't really got to do nothing right now. I say, yeah, but at the same time, I can't, I don't want to frivolously spend something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, make sure I get the cheapest thing of certain things, okay? There's some things that, you know, actually got to have the name brand on it, but I'm just going to get the cheapest thing because I just don't want to all of a sudden wake up and there's nothing there or barely anything there. Um, like... A couple of years ago, or was it a couple of years ago? Last year, when my sister, what bitch, my sister 18? No, she just turned 19. When my sister graduated from high school, I was buying her something. The first time I ever brought a designer anything, you know? And when I tell you I had the money, I knew I was going to get the money back into the account eventually later. So it really wasn't a big deal if I would have brought her something and then bought myself something. Do you understand and know that I was so stressed out about punching okay and putting my card information in there to actually get this stuff for her and then to think and going back in my head like, should I get me something or should I just say no? I mean, I got it, but I could also spend this on something else that actually really matters. You know, this can go towards this. This can go towards this. It can be a, my savings. This could go back and forth like that. I don't like to spend money if I don't have to. So it's pissing me off to see a person like him who literally just got out of jail spending all this money that he don't have, getting all these loans that you don't have the money for to pay back. And then not telling the person that you got pregnant who took you out of jail and gave you a place to stay. And you're not telling her nothing about what's going on. Oh, baby, that made me so mad. And I said, Miss um, Taylor, because also what we found out is that basically you putting all the responsibility of the bills and stuff in his hands because you ain't got no job. You ain't got no job, ma'am. And I said, oh, Taylor, 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 Taylor. Why would you do this to a man? With the man, give him all of this shit. Somebody who literally went to jail for robbing banks, which shows you he's not good with money. That's red flag, main number one red flag. He is not good for money. I said, Oh my goodness, Miss Taylor, you are just. I pray for you and them kids and that baby. God damn. Then we get out of there. We trying to figure out where else the rest of the money at. Well, if you only got this amount, you should be able to pay this. Because then Taylor said, well, if that's the case, how come and everything all to the good and you got all this stuff situated? How come we had been um, two months behind on our water bill at one point? Two months behind on the rent at one point? Two months behind on this? I said, answer the questions, Chan. He was like, I mean, um... 
what had happened was maybe it's because, you know, when I go to work and I go out the house in the morning, you know, so instead of fixing food in the house, when I go out, I go to work, I go to the um, store, pick me up a couple of sodas, you know what I'm saying? That's like $4 right there. Go to like a fast food place, give me a breakfast sandwich, okay? You know, and by the time I get to work and all of a sudden that I didn't get, that's probably like $10, $15. And then I do the same thing at lunch, you know, go buy me some lunch, whatever. And truth be told, that does add up. But it don't add up to all of that debt to where everything else that we paying bills late, okay? Two months late. I said, now, cheers. Come on now. Come on now, let's come up with something else. Chance then go on to say, okay, well, what I really wanted to tell you and that I wasn't telling you is that, you know, sometimes at work, I get off of work a couple of hours early and I go down there to the casino. And then, you know, I put money in, hoping I get this, and then I don't, so I put more money in, and next thing you know, I'm down $700. I said, what? <laughs> it was like, instead of working... 48 hours, I'm really working 46 or whatever. Because she was like, well, if you're taking time off, how are you getting overtime and how are you doing this and doing that? And I just said, oh, my goodness, you have a baby coming and you are taking chances with the family money. Girl, I was over because I still felt like he was lying. Because honestly, what I thought was, and I felt like what was going on probably was he got another family somewhere and he got some bitch hauled up somewhere else and he taking care of her. That's what I felt like. Baby, they got back to the house. The next time we see Chance and Taylor, Chance was going up in the shower, right? Taylor said, I don't understand something else going on. You know, if he can lie to me about going to the casino, um, what else is he can lie about? Because he probably talking to somebody else, doing some other things that he ain't telling me. Girl, she went through his phone. And I said, oh, how you get up into his phone? The fact that you so bold enough to make it a password, if he had a password on there, to make it not hard for her to figure out or for it to not be a password on there. And if you still out here doing dirty, <laughs> you still out here doing dirty. Girl, she looked through that phone. She said, oh, okay, I want to come and fuck you all night and then send us some pictures. Okay, who was this person that's been texting just from work? Listen, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to freak out. I'm trying. To, I said, girl, that's your reason to freak out right there. You see the pictures. You see the text. I want to fuck you all day and fuck you all night. What? No, baby, you supposed to be telling me that, okay? That's what you supposed to be telling. You ain't supposed to be telling no other bitch that. Girl, just said, hold on. I mean, um, Taylor said, hold on. Let me go through my um, phone, his phone records or whatever. Let me go on our uh, phone, some bill or whatever, and let me see his uh statement and see who he be texting and um all this stuff. Girl, she found the number in there. She logged in on her phone. She found the number. She said, oh, okay. So this number keep on hitting him up, calling him, texting, texting, texting. Oh, sent the picture. And, of course, she go back on his phone looking through his messages. Oh, he didn't delete all those messages. Hmm. So you sending pictures to her. She sending pictures to you. You deleting all this stuff. Work just. Oh, okay. Let me take your shit and just burn it. Baby, she said, you know what? I'm trying not to freak out. I'm trying not to freak out. I said, freak out. Girl, she said, F that. You know, them hormones kicked in. And she said, nah, bitch, got all his shit, which was barely nothing. I said, thank you for burning that shirt because I was so tired of looking at the shirt, that red shirt with the blue sleeve. Oh, he been wearing that since the first time we saw him. Baby, she took that shit, took, put it in the fire pit outside. She opened up the door to um the shower, uh, the, uh, the bathroom was like, you're a fucking dickhead. I said, wait a minute, why is the bathroom right there by the back door? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's funny. Uh, Cause she opened up that door. I said, oh, it's pitch black out there. She put that stuff up in that fire pit. She said, shh. Okay. He said, Taylor, what the fuck are you doing? Where's my phone? And the first thing he said when he got out that shower, he said, when he was stumbling out that shower, he said, where my phone at? I said, see, you already knew. You already knew right then and there. She didn't got your shit, bitch. You should have been more careful. Bring it in the bathroom with you. I bring my phone. Even if ain't nobody here with me. I still take my phone into the bathroom with me. Not that I got to cover up nothing because, again, like I said, ain't nobody here with me, but I'm going to take my phone in the bathroom with me every time I go into the bathroom. That's just how I've been, you know? Um, You just never know. Something might happen and you need to call somebody or whatever, bitch. You know, you just never know. Slip and fall. No, let me not say that because I don't want that to happen. Moving on from that, girl, she came up there, got his 
we protein stuff. I said that protein powder ain't doing shit for him with that little pot belly. You know, you need to stop drinking them beers because that was a beer belly, okay? Baby, she started throwing all that shit out there. He was pissed. He was like, I'm tired of this shit. You little ignorant. You I said, I don't know the fuck you not coming at her talking about some she dumb. She stupid for this or whatever. And then, this is what told me up. And I had to just sit here and say, did he say what I think he just said? He said, I'm sick of this shit, okay? You went too fucking far. You gonna sleep in the garage tonight. You gonna tell your pregnant wife, your fully pregnant wife, that she's gonna sleep in the garage? That's one. But two, how fucking dare you tell somebody that they gotta go sleep in the garage of the house that is theirs? I don't give a damn if you paying bills or not. That's her house, okay? I said, child, Taylor, if you still with that man, I know you dumb as shit, okay? Everything that we ever said about you is gonna come true, okay? Moving on from that, Sarah and Sean, girl, we don't give a damn. Sarah had her little daughter meet up with her daddy, but didn't tell the little girl that that was her daddy. Now, see, it looked weird. If I had known the situation, it would have seemed so weird. And me as a child, I'm thinking about when I'd be like, why my mama want me to meet up with this old-ass man? I'm eight years old. Why am I playing with this old-ass man? Tell me who he is. Because it just, you know, a whole bunch of different scenarios start running through my head, even though we know the situation because... You know, that's how certain stuff happens or whatever. But I was just like, that was kind of weird. But I get it. But at the same time, you still probably should have told her something. But then you're going to tell the little girl, you're going to meet mommy friend. But don't tell Sean that you met up with him today. I said, wait a minute. So we teaching the kid to lie? <laughs> we teaching the kid to lie? And they was playing and all that stuff. And then get back home. Mm, little mama said. And then she reiterated it with her. With her. Don't tell Sean because he was calling and calling and calling. Don't tell Sean that we met up with somebody today. Just tell him that we was at the park today, just me and you. And she was like, okay, okay. Girl, from what we know, she didn't say nothing. But Sean had a surprise. Sean was trying to tell her, girl, we got this hot tub. I said, now, why we got a hot tub in the middle of the floor by the back door in the living room? That stuff, water inside the house like that, it makes me nervous because all I be thinking about is the outlet plugs and appliances that's plugged up in the area. You know what I'm saying? What if something happened with the, that it just starts to leak and then we got electricity, electricity, we got electricity situation, electrical situation going on. And, you know, she was like, oh my God. He said, well, you said, you know, you... I hear what you're talking about, you know, trying to get a little spice back up in our relationship. And she was like, I just wasn't prepared. I didn't know. And so he was like, um, I'm going upstairs, get undressed, and I'm going to get up in the hot tub. It was very much reminding me of coming to America when um, the landlord, oh, was it the landlord? No, it went, um, the... Uh, What's his name? What's his Scotty? Not Scotty Pippen, bitch. I've seen your home. Got that hot tub in that raggedy ass apartment. And I was so surprised. The whole time, the whole time, I'm looking at how raggedy the damn apartment was. And I'm looking at the hot tub. It weighs how much it weighs. Plus, it's going to weigh probably double with the water in there. Plus, a little bit more with the bodies in there. And I'm just thinking of the raggedy ass floor and how come the shit didn't just fall through. The, uh, girl, I think about stuff like that. And I was just looking at this like, what? Sarah came back down, shining, and got undressed and got up in the thing. Sarah said she came back down and she was ready for bed. <laughs> Sean said, ain't this about a bitch? <laughs> You want to say I don't spend time with you. I'm trying to make up for you and all this stuff. And now you don't want... Just like, I'm tired. I didn't know that you was going to do this, but I'm tired. I said, oh, Sarah, girl, you ain't cheated yet, but you show sure enough acting and giving responses like you been cheating. That's that guilty conscience right there, okay? While you snoop, snoop, snooping around and, and, and playing around on people. But hey, it is what it is. Don't nobody care. Y'all, that's love after lock up and again and again. I said what I said. Now, y'all, I hope it didn't sound so pissed off with her. Because truth be told, I'm not. Girl, this is just a goddamn TV show that's entertainment for all of us, okay? We don't know these people. And truth be told, when the shit go off, we don't care. At least I don't. But um, make sure y'all watch Swarm. Because I feel like we're going to have a good time on that one. <laughs> 
Because when I tell you, when I tell you, I have questions about how this shit was made. And how was they able to get away with that? Because right off the back in episode one, in episode one, I got hit with a bullet. <laughs> Oh, shit, I did that. Oh, my God. You know, I just felt some type of way. I said, oh, my God, do I have to read myself in this review? Probably, probably. But it ain't going to be what you think. But anyway, y'all, have a good night. Oh, it's Saturday. No, it is actually Friday. Enjoy your weekend, girl, because I got the weekend off. And I will see y'all later. It was warm as shit today. It's about to be cold tomorrow. Anyway, I'll see y'all later. Peace.